I am happy to be here. Not that I think I am not privileged to be here. This is a visit which is almost a soul searching visit. It is a visit which embarks you on a new journey and what needs to be done for the healthcare of our brethren. That is why I am not saying that this is, I am extremely happy to be in your midst. I am extremely satisfied to be in your midst today because I was raising quite a few foolish queries to your eminent set of doctors. I know people of eminence must be laughing away the question that I raised. But doctors, let me tell you, I raised these queries because these are the normal perceptions, misperceptions, apprehensions, fears of the common man. And I thought I will undergo the learning process myself so that when the subject comes up for discussion, I will be able to allay some of their apprehensions and tell them that cancer is not such a dreadful disease, such a dreadful ailment as is normally perceived to be. Well, when you use the word cancer, be it in society or be it in the medical terminology, one likes to get rid of it as fast as possible and ensure that it does not recur. Such is the dreadful nature of this word cancer. And there is always a perception that while treatment and total cure is available for many of the ailments, cancer is one such ailment which if it is diagnosed as such, a person normally thinks that he is nearing his end sooner than later. This is the honest truth. This may be a wrong apprehension, this might be a misapprehension. And all that they say that if you have cancer, it is only God and luck which can help you to survive more than the treatment. I don't think I can give any words of wisdom to this eminent body of doctors and medical practitioners. Accepting that this is one ailment where more than the tumor or the cancer, what you need to address is the psychological state of the patient. I think the psychological advice and, and the address to the mind is more important both of the patient and his close relations because all of them get completely rattled. So I think what you need to really address is the psychology of the patient and his near and dear ones and assuage their apprehensions and their feelings. I also quite appreciate that a patient when he comes to you raises a thousand queries and for you he is one among the thousand that you keep treating. But please remember doctors that you are the one as far as he is concerned. That is the difference. For him he has nowhere else to see excepting you. He considers you as God. For you he might just be one among the minions. I quite appreciate time is very important for you that you can't afford to be spending too much of time with each patient. But please, I beg of you, please have patience and explain to the patient what the problem is and allay his apprehensions. Because if you don't do that, you are going to imagine the worst case scenario. And as I told you, any ailment for that matter, we normally a normal person has a, 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 imagines the worst case scenario. And in the case of cancer, it is much worse. So this is where I think you are Training, your patience, your kindness, your kind-heartedness comes into play more than your professional skills, which of course can never be doctored at all.